Gaming Vault presents 15 Best Hub Worlds in Video Games. So what exactly is a hub world location? It's a place you come back to after a long, tiring quest. A place where you collect yourself and get ready to embark on your next mission. A place where you hang your hat at the end of a day and have some relaxed conversations with your friends and companions. It is, in a word, home. Over the years, there have been loads of excellent hub worlds in video games, spanning across multiple genres and franchises. And in this feature, we're going to take a look at the 15 that we feel are the absolute best of the best. Spoilers ahead. Normandy SR2, Mass Effect 2. Seeing the Normandy get ripped right apart in the opening minutes of Mass Effect 2 was heartbreaking, but the Normandy SR2 courtesy of Cerberus somehow turned out to be an even better home for Shepard and company. The ship itself didn't have much to do or look at. If you've seen it once, you've basically seen it all, barring a few new rooms that opened up as the game progressed. It was the people that inhabited the Normandy's many quarters that made it such a perfect home. From Garrus and his constant calibrations, to Joker's humor and his awkward and hilarious conversations with Edie, to the random chatter between crewmates, there was always a great deal to soak up every time you stepped back onto the ship. Mother Base, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain The MSF's mother base was blown to smithereens by Skullface and XOF at the end of Ground Zeroes, following which Kaz and his Diamond Dogs decided to build a new, better mother base, and boy did they deliver. When you're not messing around in the open worlds of Africa and Afghanistan, there's a lot to do over in Mother Base. You can punch soldiers in the face, only for them to actually thank you for doing so. You can check in on all the animals you've rescued out in the field. You can go around listening to tapes. You can stumble upon plenty of interesting cutscenes and conversations. The Phantom Pain may not be the most cheerful game you will ever play, but Mother Base definitely feels like a place you can call home. Hyrule Field, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Back in 1998, when you played Ocarina of Time for the very first time, and first leaving the confines of the Kokiri Forest and laying eyes on the vast, open expanse of Hyrule Field, you were absolutely blown away, and for very good reason. In today's day and age, Hyrule Field would seem neither too big nor too interesting. It's actually quite empty when you think about it. But way back when 3D gaming was only in the process of being pioneered, much less perfected, Hyrule Field gave players a big, open area to run around in, to ride their horses, to witness an actual day and night cycle, to visit so many other connected locations. It may not seem like much today, but it's fair to say that games like Breath of the Wild and Skyrim owe a lot to what Ocarina of Time did with Hyrule Field. Eva's Hammer, Wolfenstein 2: The New Colossus there's just so much to love on this repurposed once Nazi submarine. Much like the Normandy in Mass Effect, Eva's hammer in the New Colossus isn't good because of the activities you can partake in, though the shooting range does prove to be a great distraction every now and then, but because of all of the people you get to interact with and all of the conversations you get to hear. The characters and their writing are perhaps the biggest strength of Machine Game's new take on the Wolfenstein franchise, and all of that is on full display in this submarine. Hell, there's even a pig you can feed potatoes to. Peach's Castle, Super Mario 64 Simply by virtue of being one of the first, if not the first, fully realized 3D hub world in most gamers' memories, Super Mario 64's Peach's Castle deserves a place on this list. But there's so much to love here beyond just that. Not only was it specifically structured to beckon further exploration, it also acted as a safe ground for trying out your various moves, of which the combinations in this game were countless, as well as being packed with loads of great secrets and easter eggs. The Lake of Nine, God of War Who would have thought that a God of War game would ever have a hub area, much less one that's as good as the Lake of Nine? Riding around the boat and listening to Kratos' conversations with Mimir and Atreus, or just the conversations between the two of them, is a joyous activity in and of itself. But even barring that, there's just so much to love in this entire area. It is, first off, a marvelous spectacle, with the gigantic world serpent always looming in the background, whose very presence also leads to constant and significant changes in the area throughout the game. On top of that, there's just so much to do and so much to explore in this area that players can literally spend hours here completely ignoring the main quest. Astera, Monster Hunter World There's so much for players to do in Astera. It's almost the purest, most unadulterated kind of hub world you will ever see in a video game. 
from selecting your next quest to upgrading your equipment to buying new weapons to preparing yourself for the next quest with meals and potions, to even tiny little things like meeting up with your friends or buying any items you may need. Astera Axe is a proper hub in every sense of the word. But do you know what its biggest strength is? Much like the rest of Monster Hunter World with its exotic and stunningly beautiful vistas and landscapes, the Avatar-esque Astera is simply beautiful to look at. Haven City, Daxter Haven City was first introduced as a major location in the Jack and Daxter series in Jack 2, but in much more of an open world map. In the PSP exclusive Daxter, it was much more of a hub location, and it was wonderful. Not only did it serve as the perfect playground to mess about in with enjoyable traversal and opportunities for exploration and collection, it also opened the door to several memorable side activities, most notable of those being the incredible dream sequences. Time Twisting Machine Crash Bandicoot Warped If we're being completely honest, the time twisting machine in Crash 3 was, well, pretty bare bones. It was just a room with a collection of doors that led to the game's levels, but in this particular case, it's context that makes this such a great hub location. Using the time twisting machine, Crash and Coco were able to travel to different time periods, leading to levels that could range across anything from ancient medieval times to areas filled with wizards and everything in between. Timbers Island Diddy Kong Racing Diddy Kong Racing is a game that has been criminally overlooked and underappreciated as time has gone on. While most racers are known for the great design of their individual tracks, perhaps the best thing about this particular game was its hub world, Timber Island, a semi-open world racing track, a complete free-form open sandbox for players to race around in that dynamically changed as the game progressed, and the player gained access to new kinds of carts, airplanes, hovercrafts, and even more vehicles to just roam around in. As anyone who's played Diddy Kong Racing would tell you, it was all too easy to spend hours just aimlessly driving around this kart racing utopia. The Tower Destiny As the hub of the last safe city on Earth, the Tower was quite literally the hub of all of your activities in Destiny, though of course not in Destiny 2 for obvious reasons. Much like most hub cities allow you to do, the tower was a place where you could browse and upgrade your gear and equipment at your leisure. But on top of that, it was also a place where you could interact with other players in a variety of ways, including some pretty ridiculous dance moves. XCOM Headquarters, XCOM Enemy Unknown The XCOM games have the capacity to get you attached to the soldiers fighting for you like few other games do so it makes sense that the place your soldiers and you call home would be similarly important to the entire experience. From micromanaging your soldiers to making sure they were well equipped to face the fights ahead, to sending out troops on various missions across the globe, the XCOM headquarters serves as a very important part of the game. This could have easily turned into little more than an extra ancillary activity, but it's well designed enough to turn into a vital part of the entire experience. Summer Forest Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage Spyro 2 was actually a game that had more than just a single hub location, including the Winter Tundra and the Autumn Plains, but for this particular feature, the hub that we're going to be talking about is Summer Forest. Not only is it a beautiful location full of majestic trees, ponds, and streams, it also serves as the location for several important moments in the game, such as Spyro first learning to swim, as well as his ultimate battle with Crush, the very first boss in the game. Hunter's Dream, Bloodborne If ever there was a game that desperately needed a location where you could just catch a breath and take a break from one tense encounter after another, it's this one. Much like the rest of the game itself, the atmosphere in the unearthly Hunter's Dream was absolutely incredible, while it also ties intrinsically into the game's story and lore. Perhaps most notably though, the conclusion to the game's riveting adventure also takes place here, directly acting as a violation of the sacred sanctum through the game for maximum effect. Sanctuary Borderlands 2 Coming back to the sanctuary every now and again in Borderlands 2 was always something that players actually felt like doing, because it actually felt like a place you could just aimlessly relax in. From places where you could buy and upgrade weapons and equipment to even a bar, the Sanctuary had everything a Vault Hunter could ever be in need of, as well as special chests that gave you loot that was, well, special. The fact that the Sanctuary is also a city that could eventually go on to literally fly only makes it that much cooler. 
And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.